everybody has been up to speed from the player side to the management side with what's going to come next. The news today, it really tells me something about, I think, the thoughtfulness that's gone into this. If you look at the draft status, if you look at the way that everything's going to shake out for the playoffs and the four teams that had the highest points percentage in each conference are going to play a round robin, that's fair to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I know they had some issue with that. Carolina had some issue with this format because they may have been a little uneasy with playing the Rangers in the first round. But by and large, everybody voted yes, with the exception of Tampa Bay and Carolina to this format. I can understand maybe some of the reasons why Tampa Bay didn't like it because they wanted to see some competitive hockey played before they have to jump in and play against a team that is coming out of a very competitive play-in situation. So that helps that they're going to be playing three round robin games. I think that makes sense. Uh, the common word we're going to hear a lot is, is fair. And I hear that a lot in my household with my kids. I think the children have a hard time understanding that not everything is going to be fair, but us as adults, we can understand that not everything is going to be completely fair, but the hockey players themselves are going to want to get into action because what isn't going to be fair to them is going to be, from their perspective at least, is what their salaries look like next season. Escrow could be as high as 40%. There's a lot of money on the table the players have to get back to work for. If there are any shortcomings with how comfortable they may not be getting back with what potentially could be a lot of health hurdles, I think that for hockey players that crave structure, they'll be able and willing to get over that. There are usually three different groups of teammates in a locker room. There are the young guys that don't care and just want to play. There are the middle-aged guys that are trying to get their next contract, so they're highly motivated. And I can tell you, when I got to 34 and 35 years old, yeah, I was thinking more about my family than I was the game. And that's oftentimes the tug that you might hear from some of the players that are older, that have families, and I understand. I mean, there's going to be some guys that have compromised family members at home. That's going to be something they have to work through. I do not think, for one, that this is going to be a Stanley Cup with an asterisk. This is going to be one of the hardest Stanley Cups to ever win. You're going to be talking about players fighting through anxiety and health issues, health issues that are going to stem from their own anxieties of playing under these conditions, as well as the lack of training they've had on the ice for the last two months and trying to get back quickly. And you're talking about all of these different uh, aspects of the game that haven't been dealt with on a regular basis from these athletes. I think it's going to be a very difficult grind being away from family. It's going to be a difficult grind just to play games uh, consecutively because they're going to have to pack the schedule in. But if you look at some of the motivating factors from the league, if you're talking about the different hub cities they're looking at, I can understand why, yes, the NHL would want to have possibly a Canadian hub city in Vancouver, Edmonton, or Toronto. Those are the three Canadian cities that are being considered. I was speaking to my father last night. It's about 30 cents on the dollar extra the league can make if they play in Canada right now, with the exchange rate being as favorable to the U.S. currency that resides in the NHL in payment and and, and I think that could really help with the players making a decision to have one of those cities if they're able to weigh in on that. However, I think there's going to be some pretty difficult challenges to get all of the players into Canada. I think it's going to be easier to get all of the players back from overseas and then through the quarantines in the United States cities. So I'm not going to be surprised if I see a warmer climate state and uh, city set up. I think it's going to be Dallas and Vegas. Those would be two favorable situations in the United States. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to be uh, seen that we haven't seen yet. And that relates to a lot of the details that are still left to play out. I think this is really good news for the New York Rangers. It's a matchup that's very favorable to them. Uh, when you look at Carolina's goaltending, I think it's below average on league level. And the Rangers have very opportunistic scoring and high end scoring at that. The Carolina Hurricanes, they take a lot of low percentage shots, so it gets the goaltenders for the Rangers, whether it's Lundqvist, Georgiev, or Shesterkin, into the game immediately. They put a lot of pucks on net. There was a lot of games, if you recall, this year where the Rangers had more than 40 shots against them. Carolina is very good at recovering the puck and then getting secondary offensive chances, but they don't have the best group of finishers in the league. That's why I like the matchup. It's a matchup that was very favorable to the Rangers during the season this year. I'm excited about the matchup because I think that that's what the players are thinking about most. 
I know there are the protocols they're going to have to go through and the medical hurdles they're going to have to get over. But most importantly, everybody just wants to know, who are we playing? And for the Rangers, knowing they're playing the Carolina Hurricanes, a team they handled well this year, I think that must give them a lot of confidence. Chris Kreider is going to be back and healthy. There's going to be a lot of added enthusiasm around this, just knowing it's them. Imagine if the Rangers were getting the news that they're playing against Boston or Tampa Bay in the first round. This is not the case. They're going to be able to get through, hopefully, a round of playoff hockey and then have a bigger opponent, a better opponent maybe in Washington in the second round when things shake out. But this is really good news for the Rangers. If I'm a Rangers player right now, I'm pretty excited about the prospects of playing Carolina in the first round.